Well, as case counts continue to rise in Louisiana for COVID-19, so does the need for testing, leading to delayed results and test shortages. But today, a federal testing site is returning to New Orleans to hopefully speed up the testing process. Duke Carter is joining us live from the UNO Lakefront Arena, where testing will start later on this morning, and he's telling us more about why they're doing that. Duke? Hey, good morning, Sheba. Yeah, we are here outside the you know, Lakefront Arena where people, I should say, the National Guard is gearing up to start testing just about an hour or so uh, from now. So they recently just arrived here, maybe about 15 minutes or so, where they're setting up tents to make sure these people over here to the right, about maybe five or so cars, can actually start to get ready to get tested. And the whole purpose is to make sure people who would like to get tested have the uh, well, the opportunity to do so and learn the results faster so that we can try to make sure people uh, know to not pass the virus on to anyone else. So what you're going to see right now is video of other testing sites across the region, and this is going to be the same concept here at UNO Lakefront Arena. It's going to be a drive through site here that's going to start in about an hour or so from now. Now, we did speak with medical experts at LSU who tell us they are seeing an uptick with people who are coming to the hospital seeking treatment for the virus. They say a reason people are just not wearing masks and not properly social distancing. Now, the main one, large gatherings where the virus can spread quickly. Here's Dr. Springer with LSU talking about that. There were some well-publicized events of parties and well-publicized events of uh, bars where there have been substantial uh, transmission rates. And a lot of people have become infected by going to these things. The people f may have felt well and they were spreading the virus. And that's not something that we can afford at this point. Hospitals in other parts of the state, major places like Baton Rouge in our state are filling up. And we do not need to get to that point again here in the New Orleans area. So what you're seeing right now is the National Guard preparing for the drive through site here at UNO, which opens in about an hour or so from now. It starts at 8 and continues until 6 p.m. Now, according to New Orleans city leaders, the drive through site is similar to the one how they handled in Baton Rouge, where there are about 5,000 tests that would offer daily. And while the site is here currently at UNO, according to city leaders, that site may be rotated to different universities to make sure people, again, have that chance to find out whether or not they have the virus. And so far, there's maybe about six or seven people in line waiting to get tested. So, of course, we'll let you know what happens in about an hour or so from now. But as of right now, National Guard is setting up to make sure they're able to handle everything as smooth as possible here at the UNO Lakefront Arena. Back to you in studio. All right. Thank you so much, Duke. And there are several other testing sites in the metro area today. They include New Home Ministries in Central City. They start testing in an hour at 8 a.m. City of Love Church in Holly Grove and Delgado Community College both start at 9 a.m. In Jefferson Parish, Johnny Bright Playground in Metairie will serve as a testing site. It opens for senior citizens only from 730 to 8. 15 this morning and then at 8:30 everyone can get tested. On the West Bank, testing gets underway at the Alario Center at 7 a.m. and across the lake in St. Tammany, First Baptist Church of Mandeville will be open for testing at 8 and the St. Tammany Health System building off of Highway 22 will open at 9. Cases continue to increase in Louisiana. Yesterday, we saw just over 1,100 new reported cases. There were also 26 deaths. Fewer people were hospitalized, but there were more people placed on ventilators. East Baton Rouge reported their 10,000th case, surpassing New Orleans, excuse me, surpassing Orleans Parish for the second most cases in the state. Jefferson Parish has the most reported cases since the start of the pandemic. Governor John Bell Edwards announced that Louisiana is number the number one state per capita for COVID-19 cases ahead of New York, which is second place. And we know that because of the state's commitment to testing. But the governor now has a warning. The results of all of that testing are coming too late. We've increased our testing in the month of July more than any other state in the nation on a per capita basis. But every state is increasing their testing. Uh, and so this has put a tremendous demand on uh, commercial labs, especially. Well, the city of New Orleans has launched a new dashboard showing specific data for the city. It shows daily and total cases, also deaths, tests and hospitalizations. Again, this data is all specific to New Orleans. The dashboard also shows trends over time. So yesterday, New Orleans had 60 new cases and one new death. Experts are warning that the coronavirus surge could continue to spread across this country with more than 149,000 Americans dead from COVID-19 as of now, and that number is climbing. 21 states are now part of the federal government's red zone for rising COVID-19 cases. 
This comes as Louisiana and Mississippi and uh, much of the Southeast are included in that uh, number. Major League Baseball is learning about how difficult it is to reopen in the middle of a pandemic. The Miami Marlins season was paused until at least Sunday after 17 players and staff members tested positive for the virus. All of this is leading Dr. Uh, Deborah, uh, Deborah Bricks and Anthony Fauci to warn the nation that more action needs to be taken before the virus gets completely out of control. Here's Laura Podesta. The nation's second largest teachers union says members can go on strike if returning to school isn't safe. These teachers in South Florida are protesting an August reopening. We want to be with our students, but we also know that we have to put the safety of ourselves as teachers, our students, families, and the entire community first. 186 people died from the coronavirus in Florida yesterday, the state's deadliest day yet. ICUs, they're all full. Um, we are finding ways to MacGyver things, uh, running out of supplies. White House health experts have a warning for states that haven't seen major outbreaks yet. We can see the virus moving north. In Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Indiana, that inkling of a percent increase of cases that are positive, that's a warning sign that you might be seeing a surge. Dr. Anthony Fauci says those states need to take action, like closing bars before they become the next Florida, Texas, or Arizona. They've really got to jump all over that. Major League Baseball has jumped on its outbreak, suspending the Miami Marlins season after more than a dozen players and staff tested positive. Even with all of these resources, there are still um, transmission going on. MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred says owners have not yet considered canceling or suspending the whole season. Laura Podesta, CBS News. But as Laura said, there is a lot of concern about that. Marlins games are expected to resume on Monday. Negotiations on another coronavirus relief bill will resume on Capitol Hill today. Congress has just four days to make a deal with the Senate before federal unemployment benefits officially expire for millions of Americans. But Republicans and Democrats admit they remain pretty far apart on a number of key issues, including a GOP proposal to protect businesses and other entities from COVID-19 related lawsuits. Democrats are strongly opposed to the current provision, while Republicans say it's a non-starter. There is no chance, zero chance, America can get back to normal without the Cornyn liability protection. It doesn't sound like anybody who wants to have an agreement or anybody who can pass a bill on the floor of the Senate. The Republican plan also slashes federal unemployment payments from $600 a week to $200 a week. Democrats also want a direct stimulus payment made to Americans, but their $3 trillion plan keeps unemployment benefits as is at $600 a week, while including housing relief and food assistance. A final deal between Republicans and Democrats must also get the green light from President Trump, so we don't know where he stands on a lot of this stuff. Back here in Louisiana, the state's Revenue Department says payments will start going out this week to frontline workers like healthcare workers and grocery store employees who have been on the job in the first months, uh, since the first months of the pandemic. The state is offering a $250 one-time payment to as many as 200,000 people who meet the eligibility requirements. You can still sign up to get the payment if you're one of those frontline workers. If you wanna sign up, you can go to front, you can sign up at frontlineworkers.la Gov. People struggling to pay their energy bill can get a little help from the New Orleans City Council. Earlier this month, Utilities Chair Helena Moreno announced a new bill assistance program called City Council Cares to provide up to $100 a month, up to four months for New Orleanians who lost jobs or income due to COVID-19. The bill credits come at no cost to other ratepayers. To apply, you can visit EntergyNewOrleans.com slash City Council Cares. You can also text CCC to 69516 or visit one of the New Orleans walk-in customer care centers. Today we should get an update on how New Orleans Public Schools will be reopening this fall. Dr. Henderson Lewis Jr. will uh, lead yet another weekly update today at 4 p.m. That'll be on Zoom. 
The district has already made the decision to do remote learning until at least Labor Day. Today we could learn a little more about what it looks like for students and teachers here in Orleans Parish. Yesterday, St. Tammany Parish Public Schools announced a delay in their school year. The district's 40,000 students won't be starting school until after Labor Day. The delay is being applauded by St. Tammany, the St. Tammany Federation of Teachers and school employees. I'm not in disagreement with the late opening at all. And we did sit at the table with the um, with administration to make um, this date um, a reality. Also yesterday, the Plaquemines Parish School Board announced it'll offer three phases for learning. There is virtual, then a hybrid schedule with lots of precautions to make students, make sure students and staff are safe. And there is traditional which will include regulations and guidances. Uh, earlier this month, Jefferson Parish Public Schools said that they will resume their school classes on August the 12th with masks, daily temperature checks, and social distancing. There will be a mix of traditional and virtual learning in Jefferson. New Orleans